Basic biological knowledge tells us that for any species to survive, consumption of what Earth gives us is necessary for every organism to transform it into energy and keep on our daily activities. In spite of that so-called obvious knowledge, more than often we tend to pass through what sort of consequences does that, does that unstoppable consumption brings to our environment. Also moved by a selfish spirit that apparently has characterized us as human beings from centuries ago. Maybe you're thinking, how can my single actions affect the whole world, ruled by industries that for sure contribute more to pollution and earth sickening? Well, according to more than just one crazy scientist or rebellious organization, each one of us as consumers, with our sometimes irresponsible and unhealthy habits, are linked directly to the recent changes on our environment and on the harm produced to the habitats of our fellow species. So, how consumption habits are related to our environment? And to be more incisive and strategic, what can we do in that manner to help? In order to provide a complete answer, it's necessary to provide some basic background and conceptual check. That, as you'll find out, is not as obvious as we might think. Let's start by habits. By mere definition, these are presented as a routine of behavior which is repeated through time. This behavior is usually linked to mental experiences that structures behavior along with certain feelings or thoughts. Now, attaching this concept to human conception, a specific dynamic is concealed in which the human society generates unconscious behaviors towards what's apparently needed to survive in a modern world, creating nothing more than a time bomb. Nothing gets more complex when talking about what we need to survive engraving on how different humans could be, without losing our common ground of needing the planet Earth as our main provider. Taking the perspective of Aboriginal tribes from the Americas, Africa, the Middle East, or whenever you can find them, needs circle around what's really basic, food and shelter. Using basic resources without any complex transformation in order to survive and replenish supplies. Well, take that perspective to the one of an ordinary citizen in any medium or major city around the world. What's needed transcend from just food and shelter to products that require long transformation processes, and by addition, way more resources. This can involve fuel for transportation, huge dams for energy, different materials for our homes, clothes or toys, or just a small burger as a meal, that as tiny as it looks, does much more harm than we can possibly imagine. Clear of what function does consumption habits fulfill in our daily lives, it's time to think on what they do to our environment. The perfect explanation can be given by the concept of ecological footprint. which, as defined by the WWF, is simply described as the environment needed in order to produce the goods and services to support a particular lifestyle. As you can see, this concept turns the environmental spotlight directly to the consumer as the one who is pushing production processes around its requirements. One little issue around those requirements is that currently, according to the Global Footprint Network, for 2013, 1.7 Earths in average are needed per year in order to supply everyone's needs. And to make it more personal, 1.87 Earths are needed if we sum it up to Colombia. Leaving a big question mark on how sustainable our consumption habits are. Having considered the Colombian situation, it's important to take into account how Colombian primal needs can affect our ecosystems and climate regulation. Specifically, when talking about food acquisition from fishing grounds, croplands, and grazing lands. According to the Agustin Codazzi Institute, our territory is occupied on its 99.6% by rural zones, leaving space for inferring that Colombian production circles around agricultural activities such as cattle ranching, fishing, plantations, and so forth, destined to feed up, up to 74% of Colombian population living in the urban areas. 
Even though these activities are clearly needed nowadays, it's necessary to consider how they, they are being held on and what sort of consequences that they have on the environment. Taking cattle ranching and cropping as an example, these activities, pushed by highly consumer preferences as shown in this graph, are an interesting example on how we can endanger our environment according to our needs. Even though human beings as a species need to survive and endure our long generations, it's mandatory to consider our survival based not only on what we consume, but also on how we do it. Our exaggerated consumption needs push companies to keep on production practices, which as we saw, are not always according to environmental needs and capabilities creating negative effects on our environment. By, by depleting resources from various environment, decreasing sustainability all around the globe, reducing our chances to endure as a species. So what can we do? In general terms, the key concept is to create conscious and eco-friendly habits. But how? Both companies and us as consumers take part of both creating and choosing better products that come from organic processes and or that are certified as eco-friendly by green brands and institutions. That could push companies towards innovation in terms of better practices around environmental issues, leading a step at a time to real change. Green products are only a small part of the solution. If we as a society do not work on the creating ecological habits around our consumption, every effort would be in vain. It's mandatory to empower ourselves and our close ones for ensuring a place to live for the future generations, with our regard of the species. We as consumers have the real power of change.